Okay, hello and welcome Chris here, T-Titan, and in this second video for what is the second step in the T-Titan system, uh, which is creating and choosing our designs, brainstorming designs and actually getting them made. Um, in this video I want to talk about where to find good designs. And this is something, when I say find good designs, what I mean is to find references. So we want templates, examples, URLs, a list of proven designs that are already online. It could be a t-shirt, it could even be an image, it could even be a Pinterest URL, something that's been pinned, a picture, a quote, a slogan. But we want um, a list of all of the different designs that we look at and say, you know, that's that's a good design that fits with um, our definition of a good design, which was in a I gave towards the end of video one, the introduction video. So we want um, a list of references. We want to be able to refer to things. Um, so a good design is really a good reference. Okay. Um, and as we go through this process, I mentioned this earlier in the last video, we'll get a f we'll begin to get a feel for the niche. We'll see that certain words, certain phrases, certain icons appear a lot. Um, and, you know, uh, with time, we'll start to see that a particular niche is really centered around a certain phrase or a certain um, icon or a certain kind of um, feel, really, or a certain style or a certain sub-niche within that niche. And there's a few ways we can come up with design ideas. Um, the first is we can come up with them yourself. So uh, there was one that um, I was looking at the other day, which was um, OCD, obsessive camera disorder. Um, and it generated about six sales, I think, and then we had to go back and look at it again um, and look at the targeting. But that was one that I came up with myself. Um, the problem, though, with these designs that you sort of come up with yourself is b because they're not really based um, on any, a, you know, a particular design that's a particular reference that's done well previously, because they're not proven as such, um, they'll, you know, very often they'll flop. And the second issue with these designs that you create yourself is that um, you can become emotionally wedded to them. So I cared a little bit more about that design doing well than I would have done if it was just one that I'd looked at something that had worked and, and you know, just used it. Um, you know, without even sort of uh, thinking about it too much. So. And that can be dangerous, as you know, we don't want to become emotionally wedded to a niche, we don't want to become emotionally wedded to a design, a design. we want to look at it very scientifically and know that we are going to have to roll out several designs before we find one that works. So coming up with designs yourself is the most obvious one, it can work if you really understand the niche very, very well, but you know, it's, it can also be quite dangerous and it's probably my least favourite method overall. It's something that you can do if you really, you know, get going with a niche, but it's not something that I advise a lot of people to do at, at least initially when entering a new niche. Um, there's also my idea generator software, which as you know, um, I've done a separate video for it, but as you know, it's basically based on proven templates. So the, there are these kind of template phrases, slogans that, that you know are proven to work across many different niches. Idea Generator is preloaded with many of these different slogans, many of these different um, ideas and phrases. So you can quite easily sort of find, replace using the software particular words and then use that design, that slogan, maybe even add an image as well that relates to our particular niche. Um, and just use that, that slogan, you know, within that new niche basically. So it's a very quick and easy way, probably the easiest way actually, to generate uh, slogan ideas very, very quickly. The next way is to use the T-Searcher software, which lets you search many sites at once. It's probably my favorite method because it searches so many of these almost kind of second tier sites um, simultaneously, you know. Everyone uses Teespring and TView, but not that many people use any of these other sites. And up until now, no one, as far as I'm aware, has had, has had access to software that lets you do this so easily and so quickly. And then the third way is to look at Teespring and TView, which as you know, are good. Um, in general, but there's also high competition, so we need to approach those um, those designs that have sold on Teespring um, with a you know with some kind of care. And then finally, there are other T-shirt sites that we can look at manually. Um, some of which are within T-Searcher, but we can go and do some searches as well ourselves manually. Some of them aren't covered within T-Searcher, but I will cover them within these within this video. And then finally, we can do a Google image search. Google image is you know uh, image search is an excellent way to to search. Uh, 
for design ideas in your niche. Um, even if you use T-Searcher and you've already got 10, 10 ideas, you use Idea Generator, you've got five ideas. You go and search on Teespring and TView and you've got another couple of ideas. You've already got like 15 ideas. It's still worth going to Google and searching for the keywords and then putting in keywords and then T-shirt and click on images, keyword quote, keyword funny, keyword meme, um, to keyword sticker and go and run some of these searches and part of the cool thing with Google is that Google, of course, is all about ranking results first. So if Google has decided that, you know, a particular T-shirt is the first one that should show up, then it's probably because there is some kind of metric, something going on there that makes Google think that's a popular design. So, you know, j just by running a few searches very quickly on Google Images, we can see, um, you know, some extra bonus design ideas that um, are going to work well. So there are a few places to look for design ideas. The first one I want to look at is the one that everyone uh, knows, which of course is Teespring. Um, so you can go and basically look at Teespring and see w which designs in your niche have already sold well. So if you're thinking of uh, launching a design um, in the photography niche, you can go to Teespring and just or TView and just search photo or photographer or camera and just see what comes up. And you know it's great in that you can see that a particular design is sold which is you know wonderful it shows that that design has sold and people probably because it's teespring they're promoting it on facebook just like us but it's also a bit of a mixed bag because um you know there's competition there so if we can see it then also a hundred other people or even a thousand other people can go and do the exact same search see that the ad works uh, that, that that particular design works and, and then go and do the same design so there can be a lot of competition um, and that means that there's lower profits very generally um, in copying these designs which everyone else can see. There's also lower risk in a sense because you probably will sell if you know someone sold 500 a few weeks ago and you change the design and improve it in your own mind and make a few other improvements and then try and run with better targeting on Facebook than they did. You probably will sell um, you know because they sold so why wouldn't you but you're probably going to sell less, so it's kind of lower risk, lower rewards. And as we said, everyone's using uh, all of these sites. The other thing you need to be aware of with Teespring is that many campaigns are hidden anyway. So with Teespring, you've got this option to hide your campaigns from Google, um, and that will also hide it from the main Teespring search. It'll also hide it from um, other other sort of public places um, online. And so, you know these kind of t-shirts are very often the best t-shirts by the most savvy marketers won't actually show up when you run your searches anyway and then finally remember that um, you don't know their targeting so even if you can look and you can see that a t-shirt is sold particularly well and um, very often you can look and you can guess their targeting but it's also possible that they may have some additional trick that you're not aware of they might be running a different interest they might be running on a particular demographic they might even have a fan page that they've already built up and that's where the sales are coming from so rather than just running cold facebook traffic like you'll be doing there's always the chance that they've built up a, a, a fan page of a hundred thousand people and that's where the sales are coming from rather than because the design itself is uh, one that will convert to cold Facebook traffic so yes Teespring is a great place to start our search but we also need to um, you know be a bit aware of some issues before we just dive in and start copying Teespring designs that have, that have sold that being said Teespring still definitely has some value um, and in particular it's very very useful to get a feel for what's selling um, so if you're a beginner then it's great to go to Teespring and to spend like an hour just going through, just running different searches and just seeing what works, what price points do people use, uh, what colors do people use. We already know that black's the default color, but it's worth going and seeing if you know other colors are working. What about designs? What color designs work? You'll see a lot of designs with white text, but you'll also see some with some different colors. Uh, what what descriptions are people using in the text you know just go and just spend a, an hour or two just looking at the designs that work and kind of get that grounding in in what sells um, the other cool thing about Teespring is it can also give you ideas for Facebook ad targeting and sub niches so in the demo video in the, um, in the towards the end of the niche section which I've just recorded um, there was an example where I was looking at the dentist niche and I went over to Teespring and I searched by chance actually I searched dental instead of dentist and um, 
there was a lot of t-shirts that came up that were for dental assistants and dental hygienists and those were selling a lot better than the dentist t-shirts were and actually when I went back to Facebook and looked and, and looked at the targeting I saw that while there was only 6,000 people who had put their job title as dentist there was like I think like 30,000 people who were dental assistants and maybe 50,000 people who were dental hygienists so I could see actually that that was that was the big niche and so Teespring can be useful to very quickly, you know, do a quick search on a niche and see where the, you know, where the action is basically on the niche. And then you can then use that knowledge to then go and drill down and look at some other sites and go back and look at Facebook ads and look at um, eBay and Amazon and all these other sites and put stuff into the T-Searcher and the idea generator. But Teespring is a great way to get ideas for what niches and what sub-niches um, are where the action is basically. And again, you know that these Teespring designs sell even if you can't just go in and copy them. And you can't just copy them completely for intellectual property reasons. It's, you know, it's illegal, it's something you, you can't do and it's something that Teespring won't even let you do. So as soon as you start to generate sales, Teespring will pull the campaign if they see that it's the exact same as, a, as another one. But you can't even do it anyway, even if Teespring would let you, even if um, intellectual property wasn't an issue because they've already sold so if you know they sold a week ago and then you come in the week later and then try and sell the same design um, it's just probably not going to work you're not going to generate a lot of sales with it that being said you should always start by searching these sites but I you know I have to be completely clear on this do not become dependent on Teespring early or oh, sorry on Teespring only which is the mistake that the vast majority of Teespringers uh, make when they first come into Teespring. The first thing they do is they go and look at Teespring, see what's selling, copy what's selling on Teespring, launch the same campaigns, basically just try and blindly replicate what's working um, and then they don't generate any results and they, and they can't work out why. Well, it's because everyone's done those designs, the designs are played out, um, everyone's using the same targeting, that isn't how you can make the, the really breakout big wins. The way you, the way that you generate the, the big wins is by um, moving a little further away from what everyone else is doing kind of uh, doing your own path and um, but at the same time always have one eye on what's selling on Teespring because it's just really good to know so we've done our search we've put in like you know dental assistant or whatever it is um, we've seen several campaigns that have generated lots of sales this one made 100 sales this one made 300 this one made 80 okay great so we know that people are making money um, in this particular niche and we can see the campaigns they right there this guy launched last week and he's done 100 sales this guy launched a month ago and he did 300 well, money you know great there's money here what do we do well there's a number of questions we need to ask ourselves when we look at these teespring campaigns the first thing is when did the campaign end okay and you can see this just under the order button it'll say something like this campaign has ended but you can uh, reserve more t-shirts and just below that it'll say a campaign ended you know August 3rd or campaign ended uh, June 2014 or something like that so if if people are generating sales right now if if the campaigns either still running or if the campaign only um, ended recently well that market is hot right now it's not been rinsed by too many people people are making sales in it and that's a good thing so on one hand it makes us want to go in and create our own dental assistant t-shirt certainly not the same as what they're doing though um, because you know if we go in if that guy's running um, a campaign now he's probably going to have pretty similar audience to us and if we go in with the same design well you know if there's uh, 200 people in that niche who would have bought it he's probably going to sold will have sold to like 170 of them so we might get 30 sales but chances are because he's taken most of the money out of the market um, we're not going to convert to anywhere near as much as what we'd want the traffic won't be profitable and we won't be able to run so if it's uh, new if the campaign has only ended recently well then the market is hot right now but it also means that that particular design isn't going to work we're going to have to think a bit more creative um, if it's an old campaign, so if it's like three months, six months and older than that, then there's a chance that we might be able to look at the campaign, change a few elements, uh, you know, uh, re-edit it and improve it so that 
we not just copying the exact campaign but sort of try and extract the spirit of why that works um, and then relaunch it but if we do go down that approach then be wary of copyrights um, you know we can't just go in and copy the exact design we have to be very careful to change a few words we have to be careful to try and um, basically change as much as possible while also keeping to the spirit of the original design um, and you know part of the reason that we can even do this is because with Facebook there's like a constant churn um, if people buy a t-shirt design today they're probably not gonna the same audience won't buy the same design tomorrow but you know if it's if it was ran six months ago well probably a lot of new people have entered the market maybe people have lost the t-shirts maybe people um, want to buy the same t-shirt again for a friend who mentioned that they like that person's t-shirt or whatever so the longer the older a design is the more likely we are to be able to um, do a similar design that might work but be very wary of copyrights and do not just copy a particular design under any circumstance um, finally, try not to rely too much on Teespring for many design ideas. You know, if at the end of this process, you know, what we're trying to do is build up a list of different URLs that have worked. So it should be like, you know, here are 50 designs from eBay, Amazon, Pinterest, uh, Teespring, all these other places um, that we think are going to be good for our niche. If you've got like 30 of them and 25 of them are Teespring, then you've got a problem. It should be like, you know, 20 uh, I ideas that you start off with that you're potentially considering doing something similar for, and it should be like five of them are Teespring and the remainder are from other sites. But that being said, Teespring is a very useful place just to go look and get a feel for the market, get a feel for the competition as well, see what the competition are doing. Um, you know, if you see a lot of competition in a particular market, maybe it's one you should stay away from. If you see um, several t-shirts, but all of them are selling, so you go and search on Teespring for a keyword and every t-shirt that's launched is sold um, and there's only like 10 t-shirts, well, that's actually a good sign, you know. Um, so just think about some of these thoughts before you go in and blindly copy what's working on Teespring. There's certainly value to look at what's working on Teespring, but you just have to be um, a little more subtle and a little more thought out than most people. So hopefully some of these points have been useful to you and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.